that you're going into work today and you have no thoughts. And I went around work and I thought, well, people will say, oh, he's got, I can see this golden glow or he's really strange or he's dramatically changed. And in fact, nobody noticed at all. And I found through, this is 14 years ago, working in businesses, working in boards, directors, working in all kinds of situations, that it actually is functionally enhancing. Because what happens, I come to meetings and I'm the only person that's there all the time. Everybody else is there, 10%, 14%, 83%, 16%, percent are off someplace else. And so you can look like the smartest person in the room, even when you aren't necessarily so, just because you're the only one that's there all the time. So to me, it's been, and all the bandwidth that I was losing to blah, blah, I don't, isn't there anymore. So it's a much sweeter place to live, much sweeter place than any place I'd found before. And, you know, you function better. We did a little, you know, the, little survey, this is an anecdotal survey, amongst the people I've been working with. And, you know, they found this situation, persistent situation, non-dwelling, being that way for days and days, days and days, weeks or months, to be more pleasurable than psychedelics. And some of them are big psychedelic users. And that to be more pleasurable than even sex. So this is not a horrible, bad, dark place that you go to. This is the sweetest game in town. If it wasn't, I'd be doing something else. So this is the best game in town that I've come across, or anybody that I've worked with who's come with me on this journey for some time, it can be six, eight, nine months, till they get to this space, and they say, whoa, best game in town. So I'm interested in the difference between, so it seems that with you, Gary, you were working towards a goal. Okay, the goal might be in quotes, but you had an intent, and there was a process. And it may not be purely the right words, but they get, get the feel of it. But with you, Paul, it seems that something happened, you, you're inferring that what you did didn't necessarily contribute to something that just happened. Okay, get, Gary, what's your response? Well, I mean, th th Tim said several times that, that you know, this is, a, a, that's a humanness has to embody all of the emotions he talks about. That's not necessarily the only qualification for being human. Sure. I mean, in, in fact, uh, I, I, I don't have those attachments. And yet, as we, we talked at breakfast, um, I can only be now, now, now. There's, I have no ability to be any place other than now, now, now. And so what happens if, if I, situations arise, uh, actions arise that are much smarter, much more appropriate, uh, much more useful, than I rose before when I was trying to mentate how to be compassionate or how to show Christian love or how to you know, deal with this person who had this relationship to me. Actually, it's much more helpful. And people will say to me, oh, you're very compassionate. I say, I have no sense of that whatsoever. I make no intention to, intention to be compassionate. It's just you're there 100%, and whatever needs to arise arises out of nothingness. And it's right there, and you're totally present. So, and my kid, we have I went up with our kid this morning. I have two daughters. And, and I was concerned, well, if I, if I do this thing, will I be a decent parent to them? And I think, they would say too, I'm a better parent because I don't have an agenda for them. I don't have somewhere they have to be. And I'm not thinking about the last time we met. We meet each time right now and fully present. And so whatever needs to arise out of that situation arises. And it's often much, it's always better than I could have imagined it could be. So that's the space I work operate from. So, and I, I still consider myself a human. Can I just say that I also consider Gary human? <laughs> 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 and that there's an infinite number of ways of being human.